What's an interpretation of something? If I was to put it down, what's an interpretation? Your view yeah. So there is a bit of um, allowance in this task for you to use your creativity and you to look at your views. All right? Um, I'll hand out the sheets and we'll go through it. My name is Zoe Hillier and I'm a English history and drama teacher at Centralian Senior College in Alice Springs. You need to investigate, analyse and communicate your interpretation of Alfred Hitchcock. So let's just have a look at those words. Investigate. What does that mean? Find something out. Find something out. Yeah, so how do we find something out? Research. Research. Fantastic. I find assessing student learning to be just as much about the continuation of their learning as it is um, in me assessing it. Informally, I will have students complete tasks in class that they will then report back to the class or read um, documents that they then need to draw out the main ideas from so I can gather their level of understanding. So I've got three, three articles I pulled off the net. If you could work in pairs and just read through it and work out what are the, what's, what are the key ideas um, we saw how to turn a boring movie into a Hitchcock thriller, so there's basically 13 different steps. And what are those steps about? What do they represent? Um, well, stuff like, like the camera angles, how they like, create deeper hey, meaning. Draw the audience in and make them pay attention to what you're trying to show them. Yep. When I'm working one-on-one -on -one with students, it, it is usually a form of informal assessment. I'm working out where they're at, what their needs are, and in a way planning what my next class is going to be because if they really understand a concept I was going to teach it's a waste of time for me to stand up there and bore them with it but if they're struggling on something that's completely unexpected which is more frequent than I would expect then I know that I've got to teach that explicitly in the next class. What you want to look at here is trying to get down to more yes they're looking at how to do things but what you're looking at here is what is the effect what is he actually trying to achieve or what are the themes that he is obsessed with or thematic into? concerns is that what the term is? Yeah. Never so that's that before. Whereas I also use more formal methods where there will be a set of standards which I will uh, look at their work against and certainly go through it more thoroughly. So I, I strongly believe in the principles of assessment for learning. Uh, so I, I think that students need to be well aware from the very beginning what criteria I'm assessing and what that actually means for them. Dramatic Elements is the language of the performance standards for drama. Really what we're looking at there is your, your filmic techniques. So things like what? Camera angle, yeah, wonderful. Lighting, sound. There's a range of strategies I use. At the beginning of every class, I go through it. At this stage of the year, I'm trying to get them to repeat back some of those key ideas to me. Um, I also create a checklist because we use performance standards where the language probably isn't something the students are that familiar with. So I um, break it down for them so that they can really go through and check that they have addressed each part of the criteria, they know what it means. In the, the drama course, analysis is an important skill that the students do struggle with. Um, so I make sure that in any task that we do, there's an analytical component, um, the who, why. I, I also think with analysis, it's they're, they're scared of the word analysis a lot of the time and they, they can do it, they just don't think they can. You need to be explicit in your analysis. What does explicit mean? Yeah, of course, I was just thinking about what last time when we were thinking of explicit, we thought naughty. Yeah, but it's, you did. That's exactly right. Last time you thought naughty, but we discussed it. It's, it's, telling, it's everything. You need to be able to tell me everything. So don't assume that I know, if you're going to write in point evidence comment, don't assume that I know how your evidence proves your point. Even if you think it's obvious, you need to tell me how, because that's the key. You need to be able to tell me how and why the evidence that you give, which will be from the films, proves the point that you are making about Hitchcock and his style. It's important to be flexible in your approach to teaching. Um, I often come into a class and start um, running it and the questions that are being asked by my students indicate that what I had assumed was their prior knowledge or what I had taught before and assumed they remembered, they in fact don't. So I do need to throw away what you've planned and um, go, go back over some of those key skills and re-scaffold some of the essential ideas so that your students are where they need to be to be able to understand the, the lesson you've planned. To what extent can you, or should you adjust, your teaching and learning program 
to take account of changed learning needs. At what stages of your teaching program do you use student data to monitor the effectiveness of the teaching and learning? Do student learning outcomes improve when students are informed of the assessment criteria?